Hello everybody, welcome back to part two, Barry Central Coordinates. So here we have our first theorem, that the equation of a line is ux plus vy plus wz equals zero for some constants u, v, and w. And these constants are unique for a line. So we saw that um, the equation of, let's say the equation of line bc. Well, Hmm. We knew that on this triangle, well, if a point was on BC, then one of its coordinates was zero. So we knew that X is equal to zero, but is that all we know? Well, let's see. Um, so basically we can plug in our coordinates to find out more information about the constants. So if we plug in 0, 1, 0, which are the coordinates of B, then we get that V equals 0. Because these terms go away, and you're just left with V on the left and 0 on the right. For, uh, similarly, if you plug in C, which is 0, 0, 1, then you get that w equals 0. So in fact, all we have left is ux is equal to 0. But that just implies that x is equal to 0. Alternatively, we can write that y plus z equals 1, because we always know that for any coordinate, x plus y plus z equals 1. But if x equals 0, then we know that just y equals y plus z, y plus z equals 1. So for any point p on bc, we know that p is equal to 0, y, 1 minus y. And furthermore, we know that the y uh, here, the y will be this, um, we will have ratios y and 1 minus y. So furthermore, we know that pc uh, over bc is equal to y. All right. So let's think about any some line, let's say a line L passes through A. Then we know that we're plugging in the coordinates 1 0 0 into the ux plus vy plus wz, and so we just get that u equals 0. Plugging that back in, we know that vx, or vy, sorry, plus wz equals 0. But v and w are just constants, and if we assume they're non-zero, then we just have that y is equal to k z. So the equation of any line through a is just y equals kz. All right. Well, now that we have some necessary background, let's tackle an actual problem. Consider the following theorem. Chevis theorem. This is a well-known result. AD, oh, I forgot to label these points. AD, BE, and CF are I'm not even going to try pronouncing them, but uh, essentially you have lines through A, B, C, and they hit um, the respective opposite sides at D, E, and F. Then they concur at a single point if and only if the product of these ratios equals 1. Um, so the way I think about sort of remembering the, like the order of these ratios is I think 
Well, okay, so BD, that's like the left, and you can flip this over, but I think about it sort of in counterclockwise order. You start with the first length, and then you go on to the next side, and then the first length, and then you go on to the next side, and you go the first length, just in counterclockwise order. And then when you get to the denominator, you go second length, second length, second length. So this is, um, you know, it's this IFF, this stands for if and only if. So if the product of this ratio of these ratios equals one, then you know that the lines concur. And if you know that the lines concur, then you know the product of these ratios equals one. So we can actually use Barry Center coordinates to prove this result. Uh, so let's say that BD, we can call this D, one minus D, E, one minus E, oh man, oh man, and F, and one minus F. So we know that DEF divided by 1 minus D times 1 minus E times 1 minus E should equal 1. Well, how do we prove this? We can create a series of equations that represents these lines. So first, let's look at the coordinates of point D. It's on line BC, so we know that X is 0. Furthermore, we know that the ratio DC to BD is 1 minus D to D. So the Y coordinate is 1 minus D and the Z coordinate is D using our ratio definition here. We use this ratio definition. Yeah, because Y is PC over BC, which is 1 minus D over 1. So then the line AD, we saw that if a line passes through A, then Y and Z are directly proportional. So AD has the form Y is equal to 1 minus D over D Z. We can just create this number K because we notice that if we plug in D for Z, we get 1 minus D for Y. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to need more space. So, similarly, we know that the line BE has the form Z equals 1 minus E over E times x. So I'm sort of skipping some steps here, but I encourage you to sort of write out all the equations of the points and reason through um, these equations. And CF has the form x is equal to 1 minus f over f times z or sorry, 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 times y. Now, we notice that since p, we're given that p is inside of a triangle. And we saw that when p is inside of a triangle that x, y, and z are all positive and not equal to zero because, um, because none of, it, it, it'd have to be on a side for it to be zero. So we can multiply all these equations left and right, and we get that x, y, z is equal to 1 minus d over d times uh, 1 minus e over e times 1 minus f over f x y z and like I said since none of these 
x, y, and z are zero, they're all positive, we can divide we can divide both sides and we get that one is equal to this mess. But this mess is just the product of these ratios. Um, I'll admit I wrote it uh, upside down here, so we have dc over bd, but we can just take the reciprocal of both sides, the reciprocal of one is just one, so this is a full-fledged proof of Cheva's theorem in barycentric coordinates. Now I want to go through, um, I won't go through the entire proof, but there is another classical theorem that you can prove using barycentric coordinates. So we have Menelaus' theorem, which states that if D, E, and F are points on the lines A, B, B, C, and C, A, respectively, um, so always you will have to have one of these lines extended. So they're not just points on the side of a triangle, but you have a triangle and you extend their lines. Anyway, then the points D, E, and F are collinear if and only if the product of these ratios equals 1. So it's very similar in heart to Cheva's theorem, and you can solve it just as easily with barycentric coordinates. You set up um, a series of of equations, and then you just multiply them together. There's one caveat, and that is that most most of the times you will see this theorem, um, you will see it with a negative one, and that is because since you have um, it's it's sort of like with signed ratios but signed lengths so normally like AD DB B normally you would go BE and then EC normally it would go in the counterclockwise order right but instead EC goes this way it flows opposite so usually you would denote that with like a negative length but um, I, I believe that when you do the math with barycentric coordinates, you get a positive one. But what you have to make make sure that you do is you account for the fact that, um, like, if you're letting this be e, you have to account for the fact that um, the point e is outside of the triangle. And so actually its y coordinate would be negative because the area ECA, ECA goes in clockwise order, so it has negative area. So you have to account for that that E has a negative y coordinate and that its z coordinate will be greater than one, basically. That'll correspond to the length BE, which is greater than BC. So you have a greater than one ratio and you would have a negative ratio here because E is going outside of outside of the natural order I would say. So um, I encourage you to sort of work with this problem and if you come up with a little proof just put it in the uh, in the comment section. I'm sure most of the proofs are going to be pretty much similar. I mean you just create equations and um, you show that the the products of these ratios all equal um, all equal one and um, well there's something I'm forgetting oh well yeah so you have to use go sort of the the backwards direction so you have that they're collinear and you show that the ratios uh, multiply to one. So you would create an equation of a line that passes through D, E, and F. So you'd have to solve for U, V, and W. And then um, and then you can get it, I think. So anyway, yeah, just share your ideas on this problem. Um, I think the most, outside of barycentric coordinates, sort of the classical way I've seen this proved is to drop perpendiculars from each vertex and you create similar triangles um, if you're curious on how this is normally proved and um, I think Cheva's theorem is normally proved by just equating altitudes and creating a bunch of ratios um, but this is just to demonstrate that barycentric coordinates is very flexible and can prove even classical results and it's not just a weapon for 
sort of harder Olympiad geometry problems. So that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.